Do you think they have goats in Ireland? And then like, this is just like the letter. Isn't that crazy? And it came in this thing, which was like super cool. Like you never really know um, if it's gonna like make it or not, I guess. But, and you had to like tell they had to put like this on it too, which is nice effort from the male people. But yeah. So that's that box. There's so many definitions of male art. This is one thing that just sort of blew my mind when I started doing my research was just how many people have tried to define male art and have done it in many different ways. Well, making mail, it, see, there's like, I feel like there's a difference between letter sending and making mail. The default letter has a plain white envelope, um, a piece of paper with handwriting on it, and I just I like to think about why do I have to use an envelope? Why can't I use something else? Oh, it's decorated. It's made out of weird things. It's made out of newspaper or collage materials. There's a wide range, you know, of people doing male art. You know, young emerging artists just getting active in the art field. As well as, you know, older artists, you know, in their 60s, 70s. Picking up something that I think, mm, this is pretty flat. I think I can stick a stamp on it and an address and send it through the mail. If you really want somebody to believe in what you're saying, I feel like making mail and writing somebody a letter is the way to say it. It's just like more intimate. It's like I'm taking time to show you that I care. It's fun to have that human connection with someone else. It's just like creating something pretty much from nothing. I bend, I break every chance that I get to have someone make my decisions. But I learn that my methods, they aren't always best, and that logic often trumps opinion. So write me a postcard from your new home. I hope you experience something. I'll see you on holidays and breaks in the summertime. Return to my arms, still and loving. So I'll wait. When I was in high school, I was dating this boy, and I was a freshman, and he was a senior, and he was moving away to college, and um, he was saying like, oh, we'll keep in touch. I've been reading about like soldiers when they go away to war and how they um, write their girlfriends or their wives. And he said he was gonna do the same thing. So I was like, oh my gosh, he's so sweet. He's the love of my life. I love him. And then, um, so that's when he moved away, I ended up sending him letters. And at that time, it really wasn't, I guess it was considered mail art. I think I like specifically remember one of the first ones. All it was was like a plain white envelope. And then I like, cut out the envelope and like made it into like a look like a flower and then I put like wrote the letter like on a green piece of construction paper so you could like see it and that was like the end of it. Um, so like I ended up sending him I think only about like three letters or whatnot and then he ended up sending me none but that was okay. That was sort of when it started but then it sort of ended there and then it rebooted back in 2009 when um, my friends moved to Columbus, my one specific friend Jack, and I was sending him letters and then I met everyone down there and started sending his roommates letters and then their friends would see it and ask me to send them letters so that's when it started sort of blossoming and um, we all went to art school so I figured I had to make the letters like fun and funny and everything like that so. So then that's when I started actually like scanning it and realizing that like oh this is a thing like I can make this into a thing. So it was just scanning all of them but not doing anything with them and they're like you should put it on the internet.
I started going to the Cleveland Institute of Art, and um, that was around the same time, that was the exact same time that I was sending letters to Jack and all of them in Columbus. Like, she was known as like the girl that sends mail, like that's just Amber's thing. I found out about making mail, actually by meeting Amber. I've been making mail art for about four years, pretty much like right when I started college. Carly was one of the first people I met. We um, became instant friends because we kind of looked like each other. So we're like, oh, hey, you kind of look like me. Let's be friends. She saw that I was making mail and I asked her if she wanted me to send her a letter, even though, you know, I lived in Parma, she lived in Cleveland. It's like a 15, 20 minute way from each other and we saw each other every day, um, but we still would send the le letters to each other. This one's from Amber. <laughs> she loves like drawing. It says, I can do anything good. <laughs> and then eventually I became friends with Kara and then we started exchanging letters. Freshman year, she would send us mail and I thought that was so interesting because she was right there. Like, she wasn't far away and it wasn't getting mail from my mom. <laughs> which was like a Hallmark card or something. It was nice too, because then when we would go on break um, and we would all go, well, when they would go home, we would send each other letters too, like, you know, for like Christmas or holidays and stuff like that. And we all kind of became obsessed with checking our mail every day. <laughs> and there was usually nothing in it until Amber would send us something. So it was really exciting to get something in the mail that I could hang on my wall that wasn't like coupons. I remember Amber one day talking about, cause I'd seen her mail for a really long time. I'd seen it on Tumblr. I'd seen it just like sporadically throughout and like in her studio and everything. My friend Katie J, you know, we really didn't talk in school. It was just like we had, um, we were in the same department. So that's when we would talk and whatnot, but we really didn't hang out outside of class. And then um, the one day I went home to the house in Parma and got a letter from her. And I was super excited, super stoked because she didn't even tell me she was sending it. I kind of like Facebook creeped and like found like her address on like one of the, um, on an envelope and just decided to send her mail. I went to her in class like, oh my God, thank you so much for that letter. That was so nice. I just remember um, her, well, me saying that like I never got any, well, not that I didn't get any letters, but uh, most people didn't reply or whatnot. I mean, that's like the least anyone could do, you know? She's sending out these like beautiful, really interesting, like handmade pieces, technically speaking, you know? And no one's like even like, I don't know, like bothering to send her anything back. I don't know, that's just really absurd to me. One, cause she was listening to me like whining and um, she, it was just cool. Cause again, we saw each other every day. I guess I wanted to start making mail for other people because I have a lot of friends like at home in Pittsburgh and just all over the country, especially since going to college, like all my friends are all over the place. That my whole sophomore year wasn't really going well and it wasn't really going well for my friends either. A lot of the people that I'd like just known since I was really young. So, and for the first time in our lives, we really couldn't be there for each other when like stuff was just like going to crap, you know? And so I started mailing my friends stuff just as like kind of like a way to like make their day, you know, and just like make it a little bit better because I knew it would cheer them up. It's a nicer way to show someone you're thinking of them than sending them a text. So just like a fun way to keep in touch <laughs> besides Facebook. It really fit well with like where I was at in life of just like trying to keep in contact with these friends that I've, you know, I grew up with, were part of each other's families. They get something and then that in turn makes them want to send me something even if they don't like do art on a regular basis or I don't know, that feels nice. I didn't realize at the time, but I later found this really great quote. Um, the author Gretchen Rubin talks about how um, the best way to make yourself happy is to make others happy and the best way to make others happy is to be happy yourself. That's kind of what I was like doing with it. It kind of like made me a lot happier too by like sending my friends stuff. For the first time, like see my face for the first time, like see my face for the very first time. The one time I got a request on Tumblr from someone asking me to send not them mail but um, their mom and aunt. Her aunt had been really sick. I'm not sure with what, but um, her her aunt was really sick and her mom spent most of her time 
helping her aunt. So it was just them a lot and asked if I could send them mail to make their day better or whatnot. So that was a moment that I sort of knew that it was making a difference in someone's like day even or just like in that moment, you know? Because like when you make stuff, you want people to like it, but when you see that it's like changing or impacting them in some way, it's, it just, it rules, you know? So <laughs> that was sort of like a big moment in the mail making world for me. I like doing this when I'm in like a really terrible mood too. It's kind of like therapeutic to know that like I'm making this in a terrible mood, but whoever's gonna get it is gonna be in a lot better mood when they get it. I mean, I think that in general, it's really important to, you know, do things to like make others happy and like, you know, especially like through art. I mean, I feel like you're giving a really great opportunity. You know, not everyone's gonna take it, but I feel like you are given a really great opportunity to like try and make people's lives better, try and make them like realize things within themselves. <laughs> this one is from my friend Maddie, who I went to high school with. We played soccer, we were really good friends. She made this. <laughs> we call each other beans. You have like someone's like words and their handwriting like on a page. It's so much more. I don't know, they made it like specifically for you. It's so easy to just like send a text or send an email, which you can do in 30 seconds, but like taking the time to sit down and write a letter, uh, I think is very personal. And even like taking the time to put it in the mailbox or <laughs> I don't know, put a stamp on it. I think it's just so much, you don't do it unless you really enjoy it or care about the person, I think. I like that it's completely freeform. There are no rules that you can do whatever you want and you can use whatever material you want. As long as the Postal Service will deliver it, it, you know, is technically mail art. I like about doing mail art is I can do something real quick without thinking at all about it, just whammo, do it. People are always like down on themselves, like, oh, I'm not an artist, like, I can't do what you do, but it's like, you can, and that's special because you made it. There's no good male art or bad male art. There are more active male artists or less active male artists. You can put as much or as little time into it as you, you know, as you wish, basically. And there's no one, there's no big brother who's gonna look at it and judge your work for what it is. You know, maybe the person who gets it will look at it and be like, oh, you know, Laura didn't spend much time doing this. Or, you know, wow, she really obviously, you know, put a lot of thought into this. Yes. That process uh, releases ideas and, and topics and things uh, that I might not have come to otherwise. These are things I did this morning. It involves rubber stamps or wood type. Uh, these are actually old fashioned wood type, probably Hamilton type, and calligraphy and collage elements. These are, this is from an old poem of mine I tore up, or from uh, old uh, pulp books. There's a piece of lettuce. <laughs> One of my favorites is the 8-track one, how, um, so you have the 8-track and I busted it open, it took all of the film or whatever out of it, and I like made a little envelope and stuck it in there, and then I um, taped it together and poured a bunch of glitter in it, and then taped it on top, and so like when you shook it, you could tell that there was something in there. Instead of taking the film out, I wrote in white jelly roll pen the whole letter on all, not the whole tape, but the whole letter that I, everything I had to say, I wrote it and I wound it back up and then shut it together. And then um, the tape, the glitter stuck to the tape too. So it was just like this magical, like square box of magic pretty much. I think if you're going to be making mail, you should first and foremost consider the recipient of it. When I start a letter, usually what I do first, um, I mean, between when I pick who I'm going to write to, it's kind of you know, who's waiting to receive a letter or who am I currently thinking about. Most of my friends, um, if like I decide to send mail to people, I usually tell them like, you know, like I've been sending mail for a really long time. I just like to send people mail. And most people are pretty interested in it because nobody does that ever anymore. So I usually just ask for people's address and tell them I'll send something their way soon. It will either be someone sending me a request on Tumblr asking for a piece of mail or it'll be me just wanting to send a letter to someone. If it's for like a special occasion, then that kind of guides the process more. But if it's just for 
like no reason at all, then that's kind of more fun. This is stuff I was just working on. Oh, this is from Belgium, like a little artist book. This guy put together. And so what I usually do is I, I write a letter. You know, I, I use the rubber stamps uh, to make letterheads. And I always write a personal note. And then maybe afterwards I'll, you know, put a, a, a postcard in and maybe an artist stamp sheet. This is something that was sent to me, but, you know. So, I mean, this is kind of what my mail art looks like. Then it's all, you know, what, what do I have to say to this person, or am I catching them up? Is this more um, formal or informal, or am I sending them writings that I've done? So it really, it really just depends on the person because each, each connection that I have with each person is completely individual. I never had two pen pals that were alike, or our relationship was alike. You know, I've been writing to, um, uh, you know, a hundred people, but my relationship with them is each different. Usually the thing I take into consideration is whether I think they'll just whether I think they'll like the idea or be receptive to it and appreciate it. If I'm making it for a friend, then I always like go back see what they like. Um, like uh, my friend Ariana really likes like not animal print, but just like either like fur or textures or something like that. So I'll go throughout. Um, or even like the textures of like old people and their skin, she loves that. So I'll go like through like old National Geographics and try and like search for that for her. Whenever Amber started making or sending us mail, um, she always used National Geographics and those are really great. That's a really great source for images. I usually do end up like gluing like some kind of like like something cut out from a, uh, an old magazine from the front. Like I said, I use a lot of National Geographic's lives. Um, my grandmother actually belonged to the National Decoupage Society. So when she quit making stuff, I got all this weird cut out random, like just like a, a box full of stuff. I love old books and old sheet music and just little bits and pieces of tags and Goodwill is one of my favorite shopping haunts, uh, you know, to find just odds and ends, and I've already uh, picked up just little metal trays and sent them as postcards. So, you know, it's not necessarily even that I'm making something brand new. I like to go to thrift stores to find random things. Sometimes an idea will just come from seeing something there, or uh, use bookstores. They use a lot of old books and magazines. One of the things someone sent in was a series of postcards that eventually she gave us the instructions to, to paper clip the postcards together in three, and stack them in three different later, layers so we had a postcard wedding cake which was kind of cool. Well I wanted to have a letter suspended like inside the envelope, I guess, where it wasn't touching any of the edges of the envelope. So I got a hardcover book, cut out one of the covers, cut a hole in the cover, and then put the folded up letter inside the hole, wrapped it with rubber bands, so it was suspended in the middle. But I also do like a lot of hand lettering too, like some of them I don't use National Geographic or magazines at all, I just like write on it in a fun way, or embroider. I like to embroider a lot. When I realized the things that she had been sending, I kind of opened me up to, oh, okay, I could send a book and seal it shut and then ship it off in, in the mail and that would work. I usually 
have all this paper material and stickers or whatever and I just like take it all out spread it out and I have the blank canvas of some envelopes that I just put start putting pieces there and seeing what works and what I like. I have a ton of envelopes and everything, just like all different shapes, colors, sizes, neon green, navy, black, all kinds of things. Lately I've been making all of my envelopes from um, from scratch. I'll pick a um, like found paper or um, I'll go buy craft paper with design on it and I'll make the templates. I took a, a Campbell's tomato soup can and took the label off and then added to the label uh, a, an Andy Warhol stamp. Uh, a cutout from a 1950s vintage pattern book and my own little typewritten uh, kind of speech bubble uh, kind of reminds me of the Ann Tainter postcards. Wrapped it back on the can and dropped the soup can full, you know, full of soup <laughs> in a big Ziploc bag and put my post label on the bag and stamps and took it into the post office and it said, I'd like to mail this, please. <laughs> you know, very much a uh, tongue-in-cheek reference to um, Dada and pop art, and, and it was just a whole lot of fun for me to be able to kind of pull it all together and feel like, wow, you know, I, I really am a part of something. I really am, you know, reaching back into art history and at the same time uh, just maybe even creating future art history. If it's someone I don't know, a lot of the times I'll go and look at their Tumblr and get a feel for like what they like or like this one dude, I think his 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 Tumblr name had wolf in it, so like I put a wolf on front of it, not knowing if it had anything to do specific, but so I just sort of try and incorporate that. From there it's not even I I make sometimes the insides first, sometimes I make the outsides. It's sort of just like progressively like happens and things will spark like oh I can do this with that or I could do this or wait I should do this or like if say the envelope is just kind of like me doodling on it and it's not like cut collage then I'll try to make like the inside super like special and interactive like I recently just have these like glass slides that I got at our school's rummage sale and I like glued a piece of end to it and then it like accordions out. They sent me a little Tupperware bin full of palm dates which is like a food. It's like this giant cranberry type thing. And they said that they're like, you need to try this, you, you know, drink milk with it. And I'm like, okay. So, I, you know, I was tasting food from a different country. It was sent, and that was just when I realized that you could send really strange things. I was like, okay, I'm gonna start, you know, sending some pretty weird shit through the mail. He sent me something and I sent him something back and he sent me something else, pochi balls, perhaps. <laughs> he sent me plaster casts glued glued to cardboard boxes. I mean, some big stuff. But if I'm making it for someone else, you know, I want it to be super special. I want it to be in depth. I want there to be like three envelopes inside. I want it to be a process so someone can spend time with it. We had correspondent for about a year and a half before I actually came down here to meet John. Well, it might so. have been uh, 77 or so. Uh, you had the story about uh, you Maybe saw 77. some of my work right. in a mail art show up in Iowa. Yeah, when I was in Dubuque. So yeah. may maybe 77, yeah. And uh, right. sent mail to me and I answered and mm -hmm. went from there. Mm -hmm. He, what he was doing is he was putting his poetry on broadsides and it was multiples, okay? It was not one of a kind mail art, which, what, what, which is what impressed me most about mail art at the time. I was not impressed with multiples and I didn't really like his writing all that much or understand it. But that is the reason why I put his address in the list of people I wanted to correspond with, because I wanted to understand it more. Over the month, a few months, I came to understand and appreciate his kind of writing more, much more. Um, and uh, we became a little more friendly. I, I was using a generic name which did not identify me as a female because um, there's a, there's just a lot of bias 
among, uh, towards female artists even back you know back there in the 70s and I wanted people to be open in their correspondence with me. John didn't realize that I was a woman until probably a, a year or so. Well I didn't think much about whether you were a woman yeah, or not. I'm, right. You know, just C. Merrill was the name and yeah. uh, she sent stuff that um, was one of a kind and uh, very interesting. I mean she sent pieces of junk that she'd modified slightly or added to and uh, this was very intriguing so uh, we kept corresponding uh, on that basis. I sent her multiples of uh, things I did with rubber stamps, uh, uh, printed uh, word text and uh, visual art, visual poetry and stuff like that, little chapbooks or TLPs, uh, tacky little pamphlets. After John and I got together, um, I came down here to meet him, which was kind of interesting because I didn't have any idea what he looked like. He knew what I looked like because I had sent him one of those photo booth strips. Um, and uh, so when I got off the bus, uh, so this man was walking up to the bus that looked with this long beard and dark hat and coat and I, I was kind of afraid, well, what if that's John Bennett, you know? Because <laughs> he looked, looked like you know, an not, not very inviting. Yeah, but that wasn't him. That was, you know, for someone else. And so I was relieved when I did actually meet John. Um, and we really hit it off, so. <laughs> It's been like a handful like of artists that are replying back to me. It's actually like super motivating. How can the mail be like, oh, I gotta draw something now, you know? When you're actually getting a personalized thing to you through the mail, it kind of like helps, we like, we're helping each other. We're um, just like, not so much inspiring, but like we're sparking stuff in each other's brains to either like make more or like push our own work. As like conversations start, then like that's when like, a long distance relationship ends up coming and then a friendship can start like Cody for example my blue jeans won't miss me but let's go change your shoes i met well got in contact with amber through the internet and um, found the project that she's doing making mail and um, we kind of discussed okay, well, you make mail and I make mail, so let's, you know, let's make mail, let's do this. We sent each other an email first, like saying who we were, blah, 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 asking about like exchanging letters. And then um, we just sort of instantly became friends. We were telling each other how much we enjoyed each other's artwork. She started off and um, she sent this booklet um, of, it had, um, it had a letter inside, which was probably the most beautifully crafted envelope I've ever, or letter I've ever seen. So we, we started off writing letters. She was also, she was working on her thesis, um, which was um, what makes you happy and what makes you sad. And she was surveying different people about it. So when I sent her my letter in return, I also, um, I helped her out with her thesis. She sent like a wonderful letter through that 
she, it was amazing how she, I sent her a survey that she could have just filled out, but she decided to put little um, written out answers in like two separate envelopes and giving me her own definition. Now we're like best friends almost, like she edited my thesis paper for me, you know, so it's like these male things, like it just depends on the person, um, but the relation, the more you send back and forth, the more the relationship starts to grow. So I've noticed that the only difference that I may know of between her making mail and mine, other than the fact that hers beautifully crafted, I love her mail, um, would be mine is very primarily fo focused on writing and formulating that relationship. My letter writing project started when I was about 17. I had been writing letters since 2007, 2008, before it was more so people that I knew and I would exchange letters with, with them. But once I got my PO box, it was like, everyone, anyone who's interested, let's do this kind of thing. It's hosted online and it kind of explains the project. And it says that, you know, letter writing is a form of communication that we've completely lost touch with, that we don't do anymore, that everything is digital. And then it offers people a relationship through exchanging letters. It reached up to about a hundred um, pen pals that I was corresponding with regularly. I have pen pals who live in Germany. I have pen pals who live in Canada. I have you know, multiple pen pals who live in Canada. Um, the Philippines, Australia, um, Paris, Rome. So it's, you know, it's all over the place. The amount of letters that I have received since I've been writing letters would be 528. The, the whole thing is up in the air. You can have um, really concrete, realistic relationships where, you know, it's very um, kind of like, okay, this is what I did today, or this is, you know, what happened, or this is what I've been experiencing these past few weeks, or it could be, this is bits of my personality, and this is um, some things that I've written, and this is some art that I've made, and you, you know, jumble all that in, and you get to formulate your own, um, your own perspective of it. But either way, it's, you know, it, you can share whatever you want to. When I actually sit down and I think about the other person sitting at a desk or sitting outside on their porch or um, at a coffee shop and I imagine them sitting down and writing a letter to me it's probably one of the most intimate things I've ever thought of. I was really young I was you know 12 through maybe 14 years old I was writing on like notebook paper or computer paper or um, you know anything fairly plain and I would just I would write on the envelopes I would decorate the envelopes but um, as I got older and I had been exchanging mail for so long, I realized that the greatest mail that you can get is mail that has that artistic side to it. Honestly, art has always been my favorite thing to do, like since I was a little kid. We used to have like a bar in my downstairs basement, like a high up thing and I had a younger brother so I would always like climb up on top of that and like draw so he couldn't get at me. <laughs> my dad's a professional photographer, my mom's always been crafty so we always had paper and pens and crayons around the house. Uh, if you were bored you got them out and drew a picture so <laughs> I've been making things with paper for forever. <laughs> All my friends would go play kickball or something at the end of the day, and I would go do arts and crafts by myself because like, no one wanted to do that. <laughs> I never really realized that I was into art until like I look back on it. Like, um, I'll look in my grade school uh, yearbooks, and my eighth grade teacher will be like, "Keep up like the good work in drawing, and like like you'll do great in art." But it never like triggered in my mind that it would be like a career or like a life in general. Well, um, I've been a poet since I was uh, fairly using language, uh, and uh, that's always been at the center of everything I do. When I started thinking of myself as an artist, I mean, I always was making stuff, but I only think like recently I started actually making art, like artwork. That's like a very recent thing, but I was like, I mean, ever since I was, for as long as I can remember, I was making stuff. I didn't know exactly really what I wanted to do, so I just started with the simplest thing I could possibly think of, and that was a, a chrome quill pen and black ink and a piece of paper and just filled it up with lines. And so I would work on these pictures for like a month, two months at a time, just making lines and, and just hoping that, you know, it didn't drip 
and ruin the whole thing. But what it did was build patience. I have a desire to be artistic or to express myself in an art form of uh, some kind that, other than writing. I've tried other avenues that haven't worked out as well or I didn't feel as comfortable with. So, male art just I seemed to fit. I was very artistically inclined, I just had no patience. I had like ADD when it came to making art. I just, I would learn something, you know, and I would draw and I'd be like, oh, I just can't do it. And the same thing is true, you know, with art history. I would jump around from different periods, you know, studying and being like, looking at, at these images and be like, oh, that's really interesting. And then you look at another period, you can look at a different set of images that are totally different. I'm sort of circling, in on my research trying to figure out exactly how to piece together this very disjointed history. Because male art is, is a type of art and it's, if you look at the history, it's very much like this thing happened and then this other thing happened and then, and they're not really connected. I've found that there's like so many people doing the same thing I'm doing, whereas like I never would just like look up male art, you know, I would just like, can't, like just continue making because almost, it was almost like, you know, when you like don't want to be influenced because like you have something and you're going with it and you don't want to like, see, like you wanna be able to say in your brain like this was an original thought, like I'm not like, of course I'm inspired by all things around me. But now as I see like there's so many people doing it, it makes me even happier to know that like these people are doing the same thing as I am. And it's like we, ha we have the same brain waves, we just don't know it yet. Male art, uh, which I discovered um, in, uh, through a friend of mine uh, who was a painter uh, here in Columbus back in the mid 70s, just seemed like a lot of fun because you could do uh, all kinds of nutty stuff, send it out there, put a stamp on it, and get nutty stuff back. Um, it was a way to develop uh, new ideas without censoring yourself, without thinking anything about it. Just do it, put a stamp on it, send it out, and then you get something like that back, and it's very stimulating. The way I found out about it was I had gone to Europe for the first time in about 1975. And when I was in Amsterdam, Holland, I found a set of visual rubber stamps in a, um, a rubber stamp store. So they had all these sets of different uh, visual rubber stamps like uh, fairy tale characters, fruits, sports figures, plants, farm animals. And so I bought a bunch of them to take back to my children to give them as gifts but when I got home I decided I was in interested in them. This was a good way to bring figurative art uh, into my artwork by using these rubber stamps and uh, but I didn't have very good rubber stamp ink so uh, I had to go over the rubber stamps with ink and then I inked in colors and made these big things. And, I thought I had discovered the wheel. I didn't know of any other artists using rubber stamps at all. I had graduated with a degree in fine art and gone to the Minneapolis College of Art and Design and later to a liberal arts college in Northeast Iowa. When I started trying to exhibit my work, I, I just found a lot of non-acceptance you know, within the gallery system, and um, but there was a mail art show at the local gallery, and the idea behind mail art I found was that you could send something in to a mail art exhibit, and they had to exhibit it. There was no curating. To get into a show, uh, a group show, you had to send in slides. You had to send in entrance fees. There would be somebody, you know, passing judgment on the work. And mail art was reaction against that type of thing. One of the tenets, let's say, of mail art is that it's supposed to be this democratic art form that is for everybody. It sort of has this utopian notion of that anybody can participate, anybody can be a mail artist. And all work should be shown and all credit should be given. And the first um, show that Johnson did at the Whitney Museum in 1970 um, for the New York Correspondent School, that was the rule, that all work that was submitted was shown and credit was given to each and every artist who submitted a piece. I wrote to this rubber stamp uh, manufacturer in Providence, Rhode Island called Bizarro Rubber Stamps and they were making visual rubber stamps. 
which was rare at the time, this, the mid-70s. So um, I wrote to the owner, Ken Spicer, and asked him if he knew of any other artists using rubber stamps in their work. And he said that there was this network of artists that called themselves male artists, and uh, they use rubber stamps to decorate their envelopes and such. And if I wanted to know more about it, um, I should get in contact with uh, either Ray Johnson or E.M. Plunkett, who in 1962 gave a name to Johnson's activities and he called it the New York Correspondence School. Ray Johnson, it turns out, is the father of male art, who I kept writing to for the next 20, 30 years. By including other people in his, um, in his practice of sending out these pieces to people, he was really creating the male art network, essentially, as we understand it today. Johnson began to uh, provide me with addresses of other artists. He would often um, write letters that said, add and send to, so uh, like a, a send to a third person who I didn't know, but uh, writing to that person extended my pool of correspondence. I, I was writing to people all over the world, really. I mean, that was really one of the exciting things, that although I was in this isolated geographic location in upstate New York, I could be in correspondence with people in Yugoslavia and uh, Brazil, Uruguay, uh, Japan, you know, really all over the, the globe. And, uh, and that was really exciting to me. It's kind of like uh, uh, artistic pen pals, you know, uh, which I never did as a, a child, but I guess I entered into a second childhood and, uh, and began, you know, writing and, and these people and meeting them. I really enjoyed that kind of freedom within the male art community and also the peer-to-peer -peer kind of artwork exchange. So these are part of the this assemblage box where everybody, everyone contributed 25, you know, identical art stamp sheets. There's a kind of encouragement for uh, collaboration within the male art network, which is kind of inspirational. You know, the whole basis of male art is that you should be able to do what you want to do and what interests you, and uh, and that's what interests you is going to evolve, of course, with. The kind of network you're in. As early as 1957, Johnson was writing to the Gutai artists in uh, Osaka, Japan. Gutai means concrete, so they were doing a concrete art which, uh, like uh, painting with their feet, or Shozo Shimamoto who was taking bottles of paint and throwing it at the canvas. So it wasn't a figurative art and it wasn't an abstract art, it was an action art. And Johnson was drawn to these people, started writing to him. They were very interested in how he was using the postal system in a creative manner, so they picked up on that as well. And at the same time, Fluxus artists were trying to incorporate uh, Johnson into their activities as well. And so they began using the postal system. Fluxus certainly had a huge impact on um, mail art. Fluxus for me, is and the way I think that people should approach it is to approach Fluxus as an attitude. Um, it's something that has a little Zen component to it in that it's what is here now and what is here now is constantly in flux, changing. The, the experiments that they were doing were really around sort of alternative art practices in the 60s, so um, male art was sort of one avenue that artists took to express themselves. They were interested in, you know, in decommodifying the art object and uh, coming up with an alternative way to communicate and to um, present their artwork to each other without going through the museum gallery system. It's if not you have easy. to ask or if you yes. need to ex have an explanation, you'll never understand. That's, that's right. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and uh, that kind of reflects my attitude about definitions in general. I do not want to define anything because that kills it. People still toss the term Fluxus around all the time. I see it in stamps, uh, rubber stamps, and, and artist postage stamps all over the internet. Whether it's actually truly tied to Fluxus as it was in, you know, as Machunas was running it sort of in the 60s, I don't really know. But uh, I think that because it was so influential, people still use the term Fluxus, and they still use a lot of Johnsonian ideas and terms to, um, to communicate with each other and to express certain ideas. So I certainly think that those ideas are still alive and very much present in the mail art community. Mail art uh, has changed a bit. Uh, when uh, we started doing it, it was still coming off the uh, uh, fomention of the practice sort of beginning with Ray Johnson. Now it has turned into several different subcultures in the mail. Uh, you have people doing crafty stuff, you have people doing uh, a lot of visual poetry. Other areas in Latin America, for example, there's a lot more explicit political and social content mm -hmm. in what they send in the mail. Uh, in the United States, you have now a lot of people doing stuff on the internet that's uh, kind of taken the place of some of the classical mail art. So one of the most important things about mail art is it kind of had a premonition of the internet, even back in the 60s. There was this desire for people to communicate aesthetic, aesthetic information over long distances through communication technology. And it just so happened that the cheapest way to communicate between artists in the 50s, 60s, 70s was through the postal system. Obviously, in the mid-90s, the cheapest way to communicate was through the internet. So it made that logical shift. When you look at the history, you know, before the internet, how did people find out about mail art? They found out about it through zines and through um, mail art shows and through getting it in their mailbox basically because that was sort of how people went about finding out about it. You know there was no archive online, there was no blogs, there was nothing like that. So then the internet became um, accessible for lots of people. Basically mail art is sort of split into two groups. There were people who decided to take their practice completely online and created net art essentially and then there's uh, people who decided to use the internet as a tool essentially to um, help them with their mail art and I think I certainly fall into the latter category of um, using the internet as a tool sort of to screen and to also get my work out there. I for example do uh, d distribute a lot of my work or put up a lot of my work on the internet through Facebook, through various blogs, through uh, listservs uh, and all that kind of thing. And Flickr. Flickr. Uh, it's, it's a way of getting your work out there and getting a lot of people to see it. We're a bunch of kids who've grown up with the internet, we've grown up with Facebook, and this idea of a network was a radical idea maybe in the 50s and 60s, but now, you know, everybody sort of takes it for granted. Everybody has a professional network or a social network or something like that. It's not as permanent. Uh, in fact, I think uh, anything that you do strictly digitally uh, is going to disappear. It's all very ephemeral. But that's fine if you understand it that way and use it in that sense. It doesn't have the tactile quality of uh, an actual printed book or uh, something kind of collage you do with stamps and pieces of paper and wood and ink. Uh, and I really value that tactile quality, but the internet uh, is a way to share some of that kind of stuff. So I think it's become much more about the object itself and um, creating something of value that's handmade for another person. You know, that's kind of a radical idea now when everything is texting and email and it's very digital. I think the fact that some another person has picked out a postcard and taken the time to write a message, whether it be in English or Chinese, which I can't read, uh, and you know, stuck the stamps on, dropped it in the mailbox, or took it to the post office, 
and, and then it has to travel through various hands to, to arrive in my mailbox, in my hand. It takes very little action, very little thought, unfortunately, to send an email. And I think there's a lot said that shouldn't have been said because of it, but... <laughs> when you receive a letter, it's a lot more intimate. Um, you, you're holding something that someone else held and you may never get the chance to be with this person or to touch this person or to give them a hug or comfort them if something's wrong. But when you get to hold something that they've held and they've crafted for you and they've taken the time to write it for you, um, technologies, it just can't beat that. I recently read this article called I Will Always Care Too Much. It's all about how our generation is really removed from other people and we're not really like prone to caring about things or like showing interest in things. All of our relationships are on social networking sites and we get all this information from people but it doesn't allow us to actually get closer to them. The mail uh, is a personal communication with no one else looking on and that's harder to do on the internet. You, well, email, email, you could do email. Yeah, but it's not it's quite still... the same to just send somebody an attachment. It's not like I hate email. Email is obviously essential to what I do and life in general, but emails you get hundreds a day and you don't care about them. And when a letter comes, you care about that. Like, I am excited to check my mailbox every day. Everything now is so instant, it's kind of like boring. Like, oh cool, I have a text message, you know? It's there right away, but like mail's more of like a surprise and it's fun. Just in its most basic form, people usually handwrite letters, so there's that personal touch of a, their unique font. It's not just Times New Roman. Or it's even like the preciousness of someone's handwriting. I was reading an article and it's like asking like, do people even know their own best friend's handwriting anymore? And it's like, wait, like, I don't know. It's because we're sending each other text messages and this and that. So that's even, I guess, more precious because it's like a person in letter form. It becomes a problem only if you start uh, making mail for the internet more than for the person you're sending it to. It's an interesting like dynamic because I think that Facebook and text messaging and email and all the technology is like an awesome thing. <laughs> you know, I mean, I love it too. It has a lot of benefits. But the great thing that the internet is doing is revealing the existence of mail art. Now, if somebody mentions mail art or you're interested in the mail, you could just Google mail and art and all this information comes up, including address lists, that'll lead you to personalized communication. I know everyone, like, the whole point of me making the mail is, like, to savor this old form, this art form, right? But it's, like, without the internet, no one would even know I was doing this, you know? I, like, everyone's like, oh, it's all way too, like, too much technology, but it's, like, technology It's like, the only reason that it's existing now and people are noticing me is because people can see it on the internet. For a long time, it was no one besides my mom, but now I know that actual people visit and like to see what I'm doing, and I really respond well to, like, comments, like, this is inspiring me to write a letter. I haven't seen my friend in a while, and I don't know her phone number anymore, so I'm gonna send a letter to her parents' house, because I know she visits them all the time. People aren't gonna know what you're doing all the time if you don't show them. Um, especially, you know, with my letter writing project, I realized how big the world is. And you, um, I mean, if I have an exhibition in Chicago, people who live in Germany aren't gonna be able to see it. But if I document it, then they can see it and other people can experience it. The internet has actually helped me a lot in learning about Mail, the mail art community, that there was a community of people interested in that and seeing other people's work uh, definitely has influenced me and inspired me to uh, use different things from their style. Everything in the world has its good and its bads, you know, but this is like I rely on it so much, you know, so 
I don't feel crummy about it at all. I am not embarrassed to be like, I need you internet, you know? She was a friend of a friend and our mutual friend was someone I had a class with over the summer at college and it was actually through Facebook that I saw that uh, Tiffany had posted that she was going to be at summer camp as a counselor and wanted her friends to write to her so she had her address on there and I didn't have anyone else to write to so I just like wrote her an anonymous letter and the letter that she wrote back was probably what started it because it was just a page from a National Geographic folded in half and had packing tape wrapped around it and it was just the experience of getting something different in the mail was pretty awesome and it made me want to respond with something other than just a plain white envelope so after we had exchanged a few letters me and Tiffany um, and they were mostly just National Geographic pages folded in half because <laughs> I was copying her um, and I just wanted to keep things interesting, so one thing th I thought would be exciting, I sent her a letter and it basically just told her to go to a spot in the library. And then when she went to that location in the library, it said to go to this floor and this call number. And then it, that one said to go to this floor and this call number. And eventually she ended up in the National Geographic section of the library and there was a a letter in there for her and it also had a, a handmade zine that I'd made just for her. Initially that was just like a one one off thing I was going to do but we talked about it and just to I guess avoid the delay of the postal service and the cost of stamps we decided to keep using that spot. For me, I think it's all about the experience, so the scavenger hunt thing, because she wasn't expecting it, it was, I think, surprising and hopefully fun for her. We had never spoken, but I would see her on campus. So I, I knew what she looked like, but she didn't know what I looked like. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. <laughs> Like, cause it's like, why, exactly, like, why should I do this? It's like, it's not needed, you know? Like, it's like, if I have a, like, that's the thing, I'm not sending it to ask people questions or ask them, like, I, of course, ask them how they're doing, but it's like, I'm not asking you, like, so what have you been up to lately? Because, like, I could just text them that and they could instantly text me. It's just, I feel like everyone loves what once was, if that makes sense. Like, everyone, like, it, like, almost, there's, like, a, there's, like, a little thing of, like, nostalgia or, like, no one sends letters to, everyone sends, like, bills or birthday cards. No one sends actual, like, Hey, just missing you. It's a reminder that you need to, you need to take time for people, and that you need to put effort into um, not only forming relationships with other people, but maintaining them. Um, you can't just um, you know half-ass a relationship. You have to really put yourself into it. It's so nice when it especially comes out of the blue. Like you get this letter, it's like, oh, she remembered me, and I feel like that's all ever anybody wants in the end is just to be remembered. Everyone's artistic when they have the time to be. Like, it's so satisfying to make something with your hands, to see an actual product, like a final something made. It doesn't matter that it's paper, it could be clay, it could be wood. For me, the, the tangibility of communication is really the important part. When you have to put it on a piece of paper, it, it, it's just more real. Giving that to them, it's, it's an exact representation of what a relationship is and what it's about and it's incredibly and vitally important for us to for all of us to do that because we're going to keep losing the value of our relationships if we don't practice that you send a letter like they can see like the like aggressiveness if you're upset with writing or like they can see that like you took time to like do this elaborate thing so they could figure it out like they can they can see that you 
are taking consideration of them and then they start taking consideration of you. Sending a letter, like you don't need a reason to send a letter, you just know it's gonna make someone happy because like who wouldn't, unless you're breaking up with them or something like weird like that. But like, I'm really, I don't like you anymore. There doesn't need to be a reason why we're sending it. We just like know it's gonna make someone happy so like that's why we do it. Being nice to someone, it's like you don't need a reason to be nice. You know, you just are. I think maybe one of the biggest things about it is just having that community of friends and other artists that you communicate with and share things with. One was purely out of the blue from a woman in Australia. She had uh, seen a postcard that I had sent to a now defunct website, uh, send me a million postcards. She read what I had written and it just resonated with her and she wrote me a letter through the address on this website and he forwarded the letter to me and you know we've been corresponding ever since she's a mom of two girls and you know just to to make the those connections through something as simple as a piece of paper and a stamp is pretty amazing I, since I travel a lot that community is always there all I have to do is send them an address change. <laughs> so I don't have to like worry about like, like forming a new community every time I move. And I assume artists will have their tight-knit community if they do installation or painting or whatever. And then if they move, it's kind of a, probably a shock for them. I think that that is sort of not only the backbone of mail art, but it's an incredibly important aspect of it. It's this connection with other people around the world who you may not have met. Um, but that you, you consider to be friends who are important to you, who you want to keep up with. And that's essentially what male art is. You're, you're expressing your opinion, but at the same time you're, you're really trying to communicate and connect with somebody who you may not know that much about. I made the decision to go and surprise one of my pen pals. And it was, that's a huge risk to take because you can scare the shit out of them if you, you know, if you do it wrong or if you catch them too off guard. And of course, the fact that they, they don't know you only, only, only through letters, it's not really the same. Um, so I made the decision to go to um, Goshen, Indiana. Uh, it's where my friend Lauren is. and. She was playing a show there through her school. The first time I ever heard her voice was when she sang. And that was absolutely remarkable. I've almost, like I remember just like grabbing Allison's arm and I was like, my heart, like this is amazing. We left the auditorium and went out and then around to where everyone who was playing was sitting. And Allison pointed her out, so there she is and I kind of just stood in the threshold. And I just like slowly walked towards her and she was talking to someone and she glanced at me and then went to start talking again and then glanced again. And it was this fantastical combination of tears, laughter, and yelling all in the same moment. And she basically, she took four steps backwards and then she like started bawling and then started laughing and then we had this colliding hug that actually was caught on camera. It was one of my favorite photos and favorite memories of you know meeting someone for the first time. And I'm not much no No I'm not much to look at You don't need to do it anymore. Now, you know, it's it's something that lasted throughout this this whole history and like no one needs to do it because you have your phone, you have your computer and the fact that we are doing it going back to time and effort, like you just can see it when you get it in the mailbox. Like you know there's like love and compassion, I guess, like, oh this person cares about me. And that's why it's so special because anyone can do it. There's a few things that that I think are really convincing about um, about sending mail, um, getting something that's made specifically for you. Um, you open up your mailbox and there's you know this wonderfully crafted envelope that has your name on it, and you know, that doesn't that doesn't happen every day. Usually, for most people, it doesn't happen every day. It's even with holiday cards, it's 
you know, it's just not the same. Simply introducing them to the postal system is an important thing. Um, so many of them just have their phones and their iPods and iPads and email and, uh, you know, making it important that there's other other modes of communication, you know, that they they learn how to write, even introduce into art classes that, you know, you just made this great project and you learned about color and you learned about layout and you learned about shade and now cut it into a postcard and send it to somebody and, and see what they see what their response is to that. You know, finding this this item that you made in their mailbox and, and see what they have to say. I love making mail, I love receiving mail, and I can't ever imagine my life where I say, I'm over that. And I know people change, and in 20 years I could say, I can't believe I spent so much of my life doing that, and I think it's one of the best parts of my life, that I have these friends that I've never met, that hopefully one day I will get to meet. And it's really important to me, and I think if you're thinking about it, you should pick up a pencil or pen and do it because it costs 46 cents and it really brightens someone to stay. To receive a letter is always this really intimate and personal gesture and you know someone took the time to write that to you and that's you know, that's that's the best there isn't anything better than that. I mean if that isn't if that isn't convincing in itself you're also you get to know people and, and it, in a different kind of way. And that can be incredibly interesting and incredibly interesting to kind of toy or experiment with is um, is getting to know people in a way that, you know, you don't you don't you're not gonna see them every day and you can tell them whatever you want. And that's kind of that's a lot of the reason why people have decided to write to me is because they feel like they can share anything in the world they want to. The more you keep making, the more people see that you're doing it, and then they want to do it. And then that grows, and then they start sending the people far out there, and then they start documenting their work, and then they start, people start seeing their work, and then people like will trace back to you and reference you, and then there's just like this whole web that starts. So cool. <laughs> I guess, maybe, we'll see if that happens.